How's it ladies and gents? My name is Afri Gamer and welcome to my channel. Now I've been waiting a really really long time for this game, um, probably about 8 years or so. I really enjoyed the prequel game Mountain Blade Warband. So yeah, um, this is going to be my first hour in the game. I haven't tried any tutorials out or anything like that. Um, I've kind of stopped myself from watching all the streamers who got the game slightly before um, because it's just just released. So yeah, these are really going to be, you know, this first video will be my first hour in the game. I plan to do very minimal editing on it. So yeah, um, and I also plan to make it into a series which I'll try and upload as often as possible. So I'm excited for you guys to join me on this adventure. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the character creator. Um, we get to pick our culture. So there's six cultures in total. Let's take a look. The Vlandians. The Vlandians are the descendants of adventurers from the West who lived under the empire for centuries before, before forming an independent kingdom. With the decline of imperial authority, they have evolved into a well-organized feudal society led by a caste of warlike nobles who prefer to fight with spears and lances on horseback. Hmm. Okay, so these guys kind of sound like your typical sort of medieval feudal society kind of thing. Uh, next, we've got the Sturgeons. Sturgeons are descendants are the descendants of the foreign tribes of northern Calradia. So Calradia is the, the land that we are in, um, and the Calradian Empire is sort of the empire that was the dominant force in the area sort of prior to the events of this game. So as the empire expanded into the cold forests, they found that a ready market for the luxurious furs of woodland animals whom they traditionally hunted and trapped. Sturgeon chiefs became princes vying for preeminence with the help of Nord mercenaries who migrated into their realm. They are good hunters, wanderers, uh, good hunters and wanderers traveling far in search of opportunities both for trade and for plunder. So they're kind of like your, what I'm guessing, Northern European kind of Viking Saxon vibe. Um, maybe a bit of Eastern European, I don't know, uh, Northern Eastern European. The Empire. So the Calradian Empire is in decline. Even before the murder of the Emperor Arens Arenius, Ar Arenikos, hmm. The once united realm was torn by pol political rivalries. Today, those factions are in open war, yet Calradians endure. They are technologically more advanced than their neighbors, and their mastery of engineering is not just evident in their aqueducts, beautiful architecture, and massive city walls. It also makes them experts in siege warfare. Okay, so this is kind of, I'm guessing, like a Roman vibe. Um, but yeah, that would be my best guess kind of thing. The Asari. The Asari are the inhabitants of the Nahasa Desert, a mixture of nomadic Bedouin and settled oasis farmers. They are famous for their horsemanship and their knowledge of the learning of many lands, especially medicine, gained from lying on some of the continent's most lucrative trade routes. Each clan is fiercely proud of its lineage and often jealous of the others. But when united by a charismatic leader, they become a major force in the south. Okay, so this here is kind of like your, um, as they say, sort of Bedouin, um, Saracen, Arab kind of faction um, from sort of medieval times and just before then. Next up, the Kuzates. A Kuzate confederation of steppe tribes used to live a nomadic life, but have recently settled in the eastern frontier of the empire and are slowly transitioning into an agrarian society with permanent town centers. Despite this, they still retain many aspects of their nomadic life, including their affinity with horses. They are masters of mounted archery, shooting and then galloping out of reach. Because this one's quite obvious, kind of like the Huns and the Mongols um, of the steppes of sort of East Northeast Asia. And then finally, we have the Batanians. The Batanians still remember the olden days when the woods stretched across northern Calradia, and the empire and its cities had yet to violate their sanctity. The fierce warriors remain loyal to their traditional ways. They paint their faces when going to battle, and even their noblemen prefer to fight on foot while using great axes and two-handed swords with deadly efficiency. So these guys kind of, they seem to have sort of a pre-Roman Empire, British and Celtic kind of vibe going on about them. You know, like the Scots and that kind of thing, as I said, the Celts. 
Um, so yeah, you get to pick. Um, so each faction has a bonus. Um, the Batanians forests give 10% less speed penalty to parties. 20% uh, for the Vlandians, 20% more upgrade XP to troops from battles. That's pretty useful. The Sturgeons, 20% less speed penalty from snow. Empire, 20% construction speed bonus to town projects, war repairs, and siege engines. Asarai, caravans are 30% cheaper to build, 10% less trade penalty. And the Crusades, 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on campaign map. Okay, so let me just give you a bit of a background about how this game works if you don't know anything about the Mountain Blade games. So a good portion of the game is played on sort of the world map where you have small parties that are made up of a whole bunch of units. Um, so you're a leader of one of these parties. Um, you travel around on the world map to all the different towns and cities and locations. Um, and then from there, when you get to a location or when you get into a battle, then it goes down into the first or third person view where you do all of the fighting. Um, it has an awesome directional combat system. Um, so yeah, and basically you can do almost anything. You know, you can stay as a little mercenary company. You can do a lot of trading. Uh, you can form your own kingdom, more or less whatever you want. Um, in this game, from what I was reading, you can have a family, um, a clan, that kind of thing, and, you know, sort of make it into a powerful noble house. So, you know, it's really, really awesome. Um, kind of got some Game of Thrones vibes going on there, as well as, I guess, just sort of medieval politicking and so on. Okay, so let's make a decision now on the culture of our character. I'm kind of leaning towards the Empire. I'm thinking of maybe creating a character whose you know goal is to restore the empire kind of thing. So you know we aim to be emperor one day. So yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, so the character create customization. Now, for those of you who have seen any of the previous games, the characters look so much better, uh, which is great. Um, I'm just going to go, I'm not going to go too in-depth with the character creator, I'm just going to do a bit of randomization and see if we can... Uh, okay, this is height and voice pitch, so... Hold your ground! Jails won't die! Line up! Close in! Okay, that guy sounds like a sort of a... Take them down! Yeah, that, that kind of fits to an Imperial accent, if you ask me. I'm going to make him a little bit... Lighter. Uh, okay, that's a little bit too short. <laughs> so let's give him a little bit of a medium height. Um, okay, yeah, he's a male. I'm going to randomize the face. Let's see what we find. Looking for someone who's sort of got that, you know, kind of Roman Caesar vibe about him. Let's see what we can find. I like this guy here. I'll, I'll customize his hair, maybe. I like the face shape. Eyes. And let's see what kind of eye color we can give him. Give him some green eyes. That looks cool. His nose. Yeah, I think that's all fine. Mouth looks okay. Now the hair. Let's see. We've got a couple different options here. Um, Go. So what kind of hair I want to give him? Oh, that's cool. Reminds me of Vikings, the series. Uh, Empire. Yeah, that definitely doesn't fit. That's more, I think, from the Steps faction. Wow. Curly hair. This definitely gives me a very sort of yeah, kind of Caesarish vibe about it. Okay, cool. I like this one. Let's see, maybe a bit of a beard or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is kind of giving me, um, for those of you who have watched uh, Gladiator, Russell Crowe is giving me, giving me some of those vibes, so that's perfect. Okay, cool. That's with some clothes on. So let's... Looks good to me. Okay, so here we pick our family, which is... So this is also similar to the previous games. You sort of pick your background and it gives you different stats. Um, you know, for example, into one-handed, um, 
you know, horse riding, that kind of thing. Um, so it's quite interesting beforehand. You never got to see your parents. So that's quite fun. Um, so we were born into a family of a landlord's retainers. Your father was a trusted lieutenant of the local land-owning aristocrat. He rode with the Lord's Cavalry, fighting as an armoured lancer. Okay, that's pretty cool. Ten skill levels. Um, one focus point to riding and polearm. One attribute to vigor. Okay, so this part, you know, you, how you customize your character and that kind of thing, it ha definitely has some R RPG elements. You know, you increase your skills, that kind of thing. Um, you, you get skill points and so on. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, next option, urban merchants. Your family were merchants in one of the main cities of the empire. They sometimes organized caravans to nearby towns and discussed issues in the town council. So there we get 10 skill levels, one focus point to trade and charm, and one attribute to social trade and charm. Um, freeholders, your family were small farmers with just enough land to feed themselves and make a small profit. People like them were the pillars of the imperial rural economy as well as the backbone of the levy. Okay, so then of pole arms, you get 10 skill levels, one focus point to athletics and pole arm, and one attribute to endurance. Urban artisans, your family owned their own workshop in the city, making goods from raw materials brought in from the countryside. Your father played an active, if minor role in the town council and also served in the militia. So 10 skill level, one focus point to smithing and crossbow, and one attribute to intelligence. So that's another thing which is quite new to this game. Um, you you can actually create your own weapons when you find, you know, you go to a blacksmith from what I read. Um, whereas in the previous games, you could just buy, you know, the weapons as is. So that's quite cool. You know, if you're wanting to, I suppose there might be a, a need for creating good weapons and selling them in other places. So it might be a viable career path. Um, like I said, I'm looking for more I'm thinking I'm going for that kind of legionary commander vibe. Um, so, yeah, you know, someone who's going to fight. So I'm planning on doing a lot of that. Um, okay, so foresters. Your family lived in a village, but did not own their own land. Instead, your father supplemented paid jobs with long trips in the woods, hunting and trapping, always keeping a wary eye for the, lo the Lord's game wardens. Okay, so kind of a poacher, basically. So you get 10 skill level. One focus point to scouting and bow. One attribute point to control. Control. What's control? Oh, control is up here. Oh, okay. Okay. And then urban vagabonds, so kind of hobos, more or less. Your family numbered among the many poor migrants living in the slums that grow up outside the walls of imperial cities, making whatever money they could from a variety of odd jobs. Sometimes they did service for one of the empire's many criminal gangs, and you had an early look at the dark side of life. So you get 10 skill level, one focus point to roguery and throwing, and one attribute to cunning. <coughs> so that's another thing which is quite new in this game is the roguery. Uh, roguery, yeah. So you can encounter like criminal gangs and that kind of thing, and if you kind of um, intimidate them, you know, maybe beat them up kind of thing in towns, then you can set them up as your gang and you get to take sort of the earnings from that. So, yeah, that's something that's quite cool and new. So I'm thinking definitely going to go with the landlord's retainers. Yeah, so a bit of cavalry, a bit of pole arm. Um, yeah, definitely got more of a commander kind of vibe about it. Next. Okay, so your early childhood. As a child, you were noted for your leadership skills. <laughs> Check him out there. He's very chuffed with himself. Um, so... If the wolf pup gang of your early childhood had an alpha, it was definitely you. All the other kids followed your lead as you decided what to play and where to play, and led them in games and mischief. So you get focus point to leadership and tactics, and one attribute to cunning. So that's quite appealing, leadership and tactics. Brawn, your brawn. Um, you were big. Uh, and other children look to have you around in any scrap with children from a neighboring village. You pour, you push the plow and what? You push the plow and throw an axe like an adult. Your okay for a tiny kid, <laughs> pretty scary. So you get throwing uh, two-handed and one to vigor. 
your attention to detail. You were quick on your feet and attentive to what you, was going on around you. Usually you could run away from trouble, though you could give a good account of yourself in a fight with other children if cornered. So you get one-handed, uh, you get athletics, okay, that's quite cool, and you get control. Okay, that's quite interesting. Um, your aptitude for numbers. Most children around you had only the most rudimentary education, but you lingered after class to study letters and mathematics. You were fascinated by the marketplace, weights and measures, tallies and accounts, the chatter about profits and losses. So you get a focus point to engineering and trade, and one to intelligence. So engineering and trade, and one to intelligence. Okay. Your way with people. You were always attentive to other people, good at guessing their motivations. You studied how individuals were swayed and tried out what you learned from adults on your friends. Okay, so you get one focus point to charm and leadership, one point to social. Mm, so social would you know also be quite useful for someone who's looking to rise up the ranks, because. Um, I understand that the sort of social system that they've created in this game is a lot more in-depth than the previous games as well, so different lords' opinions of you can have quite a big effect on how you go through the game. And then finally, your skills with the horse. You were always down, uh, drawn to animals and spent as much time as possible hanging out in the village stables. You could calm horses and were sometimes called upon to break in new cults. You learned the basics of veterinary arts, much of which is applicable to humans as well. Okay, cool. So you get one focus point to riding and medicine and one to endurance. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe the way with people might be a good one. Leadership. Charm and one to social. It's either that or this leadership over here. So you get, yeah, I think this is a better one. Leadership and tactics. And then you get to cunning. Okay, yeah, let's go with that one. So in your adolescence, like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also herded the sheep. Cool, this seems to have some kind of quarterstaff there. So you went with other fleet-footed youths to take the village, village's sheep, goats, or cattle to graze in pastures near the village. You were in charge of chasing down stray beasts and always kept a big stone on hand to be hurled at lurking predators if necessary. Okay, fair enough. So that's throwing and athletics that you get, and you get an attribute of control. You worked in the village smithy. You were apprenticed to the local smith. You learned how to heat and forge metal, hammering for hours at a time until your muscles ached. So you get one focus point to two-handed and smithing, and you get one attribute to vigor. Okay, cool. So repair projects, so repaired projects. You helped dig wells, rethatch houses, and fix broken plows. You learned about the basics of construction as well as what it takes to keep a farm community prosperous. Okay, that's interesting. So you get smithing, you get engineering, and you get a point to intelligence. Hmm, okay, that's quite attractive. Gathered herbs in the wild. You were sent by the village healer up into the hills to look for useful medicinal plants. You learn which herbs healed wounds or brought down fever and how to find them. So you get one focus point to medicine, uh, medicine and scouting. I feel like those I'm going to leave to someone else. Um, so yeah, you get sort of hero characters um, that you meet in the world who obviously have their own stats similar to you. So you can also rely on them filling the gaps. You don't have to be a true jack of all trades. Actually, you can't really be a true jack of all trades. You don't get enough levels for that. So you need to kind of specialize a little bit. Um, so a hunted small game. You accompanied a local hunter as he went into the wilderness, helping him set up traps and catch small animals. So you get one focus point to bow um, and tactics, one attribute point to control. And then finally, sold produce at the market. You took your family's goods to the nearest town to sell your produce and buy supplies. It was hard work, but you enjoyed the hubbub of the marketplace. So you get one focus point to trade, one to charm, and one to social. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm thinking maybe the repaired projects. I'd like to dabble a little bit in smithing. And the engineering, I'm sure, will come in handy for, or maybe not. Hmm. 
thinking maybe social is a good idea. Yeah, trade and charm. Um, okay, let's go with that. So in your youth, um, as a youngster growing up in Calradia, war was never too far away. You joined a commander's staff. Oh, wow, okay. Your family arranged for you to be part of the staff of an imperial strategos. You were not given major responsibilities, mostly carrying messages and tending to his horse, but it did give you a chance to see how campaigns were planned and men were deployed in battle. So sort of like a squire kind of thing. So you get one focus point to steward. Hmm, okay, that's quite interesting. Make a settlement prosper. And tactics, that's also quite useful. As well as cunning. Okay, you were trained with the cavalry. Um, you could never have bought the equipment on your own, but you were a good enough rider so that the local lord lent you a horse and equipment. You joined the armored cavalry, training with the lance. So you get one focus point to riding and one to pole arm, as well as some endurance. Okay, that's quite interesting. Stood guard with the garrisons. So urban troops spend much of their time guarding the town walls. Most of their training was in missile weapons, especially useful during sieges. So you get one point to crossbow and one to engineering, as well as in intelligence. Mm, okay, rode with the scouts. All of Calradia's kingdoms recognize the value of good light cavalry and horse archers, and are sure to recruit nomads and borderers with the skills to fulfill those duties. You were a good enough rider that your neighbors pitched in a, uh, to buy you a small pony and a good bow so that you could fulfill their levy obligations. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Train with the infantry. Levy armed with spear and shield, drawn from small holding farmers, have always been the backbone of most armies of Calradia. So you get one-handed as well as pole arm. And then finally join the skirmishers. Um, younger recruits or those of uh, slighter build or those too poor to buy shield and armor tend to join the skirmishers, fighting with bow and javelin. They try to stay out of reach of the main enemy forces. So you get one focus point to throwing and one to bow as well as one to control. So I'm sort of leaning towards either the cavalry hmm, or the commander staff. I quite like the commander staff because I am going for the whole commander vibe and that steward will help me when I eventually get my first, well, when I set up my empire, my kingdom. Okay, so you're, ad you're young adulthood. Before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was defeated an enemy in battle. So not everyone who musters for their levy marches to war and not everyone who goes on campaign sees action. You did both, and you also took down an enemy warrior in direct one-to-one -one combat, in the full view of your comrades. So you get 10 skill level and 1 focus point to one-handed and two-handed, as well as 1 attribute to vigor, plus 1 valor and renown. So you have sort of a reputation in the game, and valor as well as renown, um, if I'm not mistaken, honor as well, are form a part of that. You led a successful manhunt. So when your community needed to organize a posse to pursue horse thieves, you were the obvious choice. You hunted down the raiders, surrounded them, and forced their surrender, and took back your stolen property. So you get tactics, leadership, as well as cunning, and one to calculating. So I, yeah, again, I'm guessing that's that's a new one for your reputation. Invested some money in land. So your parents didn't give you much money, but they did leave just enough for you to purchase a plot of unused land at the edge of the village. You cleared away rocks and dug an irrigation ditch, raised a few seasons of crops, then sold it for a considerable profit. So you get one point to trade and one to smithing, as well as to intelligence. You hunted a dangerous animal. Wolves, bears, wolves and bears are a constant menace to the flocks of northern Calradia, while hyenas and leopards trouble the south. You went with a group of your fellow villagers and fired the missile that brought down the beast. So you get one point to bow and one to crossbow, as well as one to control and some renown. Uh, you had a famous escapade in town. Maybe it was a love affair, or maybe you cheated at dice. Or maybe you just chose your words poorly when drinking with a dangerous crowd. Anyway, on one of your trips into town, you got into the kind of trouble from which only a quick tongue or quick feet get you out alive. 
So you get a bit of roguery with this one as well as some athletics um, and then endurance. And then finally you treated people well. Yours wasn't the kind of reputation that local legends are made of, but it was the kind that wins you respect amongst those around you. You were consistently fair and honest in your business dealings and helpful to those in trouble. In doing so, you get a sense or you got a sense of what people what make, made people tick. So you get one to charm, one to steward, um, one to social, and then you get mercy, generosity, and honor. Wow, okay. So this one you start out with quite a good reputation. Hmm. I think I'm kind of leaning towards the combat one, maybe. Um. Maybe social is a better idea, actually. Yeah, let's do social. Okay, so like many families in Colorado, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer, but you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain. Oh, dear and your two younger siblings seized. But you and your brother survived because you subdued a raider, so you were able to grab a knife in the confusion of the attack. You stabbed the raider, blocking your way. So that gives you one-handed and athletics, which sounds fairly useful, and one two bigger. You drove them off with arrows, so you grabbed a bow and sent a few arrows the raider's way. They took cover, giving you the opportunity to flee with your brother. So you get one focus point to bow, and tactics as well as one to control. No, nah, not really. You rode off on a fast horse. So jumping on the two remaining horses in the inn's burning stable, you and your brother broke out of the encircling raiders and rode off. So you get one focus point to riding and scouting as well as one to endurance. Mm. You tricked the raiders. In the confusion of the attack, you so shouted that someone had found treasure in the back room. You then made your way out of the un Defended entrance with your brother. So one to roguery and one to tactics. And then finally you organize the travelers to break out. So you encourage the few travelers in the inn to break out in a coordinated fashion. Uh, the raiders killed or captured most, but you and your brother were able to escape. So you get one focus point to leadership and charm and one to social. Okay, so I feel like you subdued a raider. I want a bit more um, sort of physical skills here. I'm kind of lacking a little bit in that department. Um, yeah. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so a name. Hmm, what are we going to call this guy? Um, let's think of an interesting name. See if I come up with something cool. No, I'm not liking names. Uh, hmm. Let us call him. Antonius. Sounds like a very sort of Romany kind of name. Yeah, Antonius it is. Let's go. Uh, okay, now you select the difficulty. Um, so I think I'm going to put it on. Yeah, let's, let's go realistic. I do have a little bit of um, experience with these kind of games, like I said. played the previous one, so I have a rough idea of how stuff works. Um, Enable death. Choose if the heroes are able to die on the battlefield. Mm, so in the previous games they weren't, so I think I'm going to leave that unticked. And then enable auto allocation of perks for members in your clan. Mm, no, I think I'd like to get a bit involved in that and see how that works. So let's do it. Okay, here we are in the game. So, this is um, my brother, Nathanos. Brother, it's been three days now. We've been tracking those bastards. Sorry, language. I think we're getting close. We need to know what we need to think about how, what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue Fasos and Alea? So, that's obviously my siblings. Are we up for a fight? This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush off our skills. The practice could come up useful when we catch up with the raiders. Okay, so this is similar to the previous game as well, where you sort of strip training camp. Mm. 
yeah, if I remember correctly, you start in a training camp um, where you can kind of figure out all the controls and so on. So yeah, I'm going to run the course. I need to know if I can fight if I have to. So from what I've seen, um, the combat is mostly similar, but there are some slight changes to it. So definitely want to check it out. Everything seems a lot more sort of responsive and smooth. So yeah. Um, so do you think we'll catch up with the Raiders soon? The tracks look fresh and I've seen some smoke on the horizon. They can't move too quickly if they're still looting and raiding. Fair enough. Now I'm pretty sure we'll be able to rescue the little ones or die trying. Wow, optimistic. Um, how should we prepare for the fight? Well, if they're still pillaging, they may have split up into smaller groups. Hopefully we won't need to take them all on at once. But it would help if we could hire or persuade some people to join us. Okay, so I'm going to run the course. So we can see. Okay, so your normal WASD to move around. Your mouse to look around. Um, let's enter the training area. So let's go melee first. Okay, so here's sword and shield. So we choose a weapon to begin training. Okay, well, let's. So I'm quite a big fan of, of sword and shield and, you know, like spear and shield and that kind of thing. But let's give the two-handed a try. Okay. So, defend yourself. So, like I said, it's a directional combat system. So, with the blocking as well. So, this guy's attacking. I suppose he's attacking from his right, but it's to my left. So, I block to the left. Boom. Like that. Other side. Right. Up. And down. So it's the same with the attack. So I go left and I attack the left. Right, right, up. Nope, up, there, and down, stab. Okay. So that's the basic training for that. And then sword and shield. So this is one area now that's slightly different. In the previous game, if you blocked with a shield, you just blocked. Whereas now you can block directionally, and if I'm not mistaken, it reduces the damage your shield takes because your shield can um, or does lose durability and it can break, leaving you without a shield. Okay, so that's that. So we are. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the advanced melee training, yeah. Okay, so let's start with the sword and shield. Beat rookie trainer and beat veteran trainer. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, so the combat is definitely smoother. Ooh. Let's see if this... Oh yeah, shield bash. Nice. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. That's something that was added as a shield bash. In the other game, you could do like a kick. Um, but a shield bash makes sense. Boom! Ooh, there we go. Get wrecked. <laughs> okay, now this guy here has got a two-handed sword. Um, let's give it a go. Boom. Yeah. Not going to give him a chance. Ooh, jeez. Come on. Mm. Boom! <laughs> Take that. Okay, so feel pretty comfortable with the sword and shield. Let's give this a try. Okay, so the blocking in the previous game, if I recall correctly, was automatic with you know weapons and that kind of thing. So yeah, this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have to stay on my toes to block block what he's or all of his attacks. Oh, jeez. 
Yeah. Oh jeez, not going well. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, two-handed sword. Definitely not as easy as in the previous game. Okay, let's try this again. Oh. Which, look, I think it's great. Oh, okay. Okay, getting a bit of a hang of this. So, the important thing with a two-handed sword in real life was generally the people relied on movement or speed. Because, you know, uh, not movement or speed, um, armor was an important thing with... Uh, uh, there, I got wrecked. Well, yeah, so, you know, with two-handed weapons, because you don't have the benefit of a shield to protect you, um, you would move around a lot, or you would rely on heavy armor to kind of cover up for the fact that you don't have that added protection. Well, yeah, this... That stab. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do a lot more practice with the with the two-handed sword to get it right. Um. Him. Let's give this guy a go. Okay, <laughs> just go at it fast and furious. <sighs> yeah, I can I can definitely tell that my I'm gonna need some work on the two-handed weapons. Good thing they're not really my favorite, so <laughs> there's a there's a great convenient excuse. Okay, so, spear. The thing with the spear should be your reach. And, yeah, generally spears should be fairly quick. Oh, jeez. A little bit of a glitch there. So I think if you directionally block properly with a shield, you, um... You give them sort of like a stun, would be my guess. There we go, get wrecked. Let's see. Okay, so interesting the two-handed weapons don't seem to be quite as fast as the one or the one-handed the two-handed swords don't seem to be as fast as the one-handed swords which is a bit problematic but anyway there we go uh, managed to make it through um, 
I definitely the combat feels a bit more or a lot more responsive and definitely feels a bit more sort of skill based than the previous one um, which is great it's always fun um, definitely a bit more challenging okay so we're gonna go to the mounted area next so yeah I really enjoy the mounted combat in um, the mountain blade games um, spears are fun so in the previous game you used to have this mechanic called couching where the person basically like holds the spear under their arm so sort of how jousting was done back in the day um, I did read that I don't think this game does because to be honest with you that couching was just really OP oh, missed one there um, yeah you could one shot a lot of a lot of enemies with it so that's cool I don't mind Um, also, I'm not 100% sure, but, no, okay. So I was going to say, I'm, I'm wondering if the whole couching thing was more of a medieval period, um, sort of tactic. Um, but I think it was used before that. So, yeah, and this, this, like I said, this is sort of set. If we're going to compare it to our his, his story, history, um, this is sort of set shortly after the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, so yeah, but I think it was definitely a tactic that's been used for quite a long time. Yep. Jump. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, we missed three. Not too bad, all told. Uh, next up, sword and shield. Also enjoy sword and shield on horseback. Let's do it. See if we can get all of them this time. Um, yeah, obviously mounted combat um, is very effective was very effective as well because you know you've got all the extra mobility you can sort of add that extra momentum and weight to your your swings or your spear thrusts or that kind of thing so yeah mounted combat is good although i would like to do a game where i play sort of as a like a viking kind of vibe you know mostly in the shield wall oh yeah this one um you know stay on the ground kind of thing heavily armored heavily shield shielded um, warriors because that's another thing that was upgraded in this game was the sort of the formations and tactics and stuff you can order your people to to do um, so like a shield wall is now quite effective so yeah I'm quite excited to try that out too okay same, same as last one, apparently. Okay, now comes the really interesting one. Um, it's always really cool if you can get it right, mounted archery, but it's not easy because um, so the reticule gets the longer you hold down your shot, the bigger the reticule gets, um, and it starts off pretty big on mounted combat anyway. So, yeah. So the bigger your, your yeah the bigger your reticle gets, the less accurate your shots. Um, so yeah, you can always you know wait to get up fairly close, or obviously increase your skill with it. Um, so obviously that sort of Mongol um, faction, that, what was it, K Kizites or something like that, were they'll obviously be good at this. Um, and you know it was also a very very effective whoop, tactic historically um, the Mongols used it and yeah pretty much steamrolled over most most other cultures armies um, just because they stayed mobile and just kind of yeah weighed people down with arrows so very effective tactic boom nice uh, kind of should have done the little jump there, but oh uh, well. I definitely, the archery feels a bit better in this one. 
feels a bit smoother. Um, I don't know, a bit more realistic, I suppose. So I have done a little bit of archery in real life myself. So I don't know, it just feels, got that feel about it, which is a bit more realistic. Okay, next, the uh, sort of ground based ranged. Ooh, so crossbows. So the good thing about crossbows, you still got the reticule, but once you aim it, or you can zoom in with shift, once you aim it, once you've got your crossbow loaded, it doesn't, um, the reticle doesn't get any bigger. And the whole idea behind that is holding a bowstring drawn takes a lot of strength and, and stamina to do. Whereas with your crossbow, you literally draw it once, it clicks into place and, whoop, missed that one. And that's it, you can sort of hold it like that more or less indefinitely. Um, whereas even sort of the strongest archer would have trouble holding a bow for a significantly long time. Um, that's why, so modern um, compound bows, all the pulleys and wheels and stuff like that, makes it a lot easier to um, hold a drawn bowstring in place. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so look there, see I'm holding it, it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. So, yeah, basically my guy getting tired of holding it the whole time. Which is cool. Nice realism there. Um, yeah. That's quite cool. So you're, when you're standing, I don't know if, if this is based now, if they've sort of altered my character's skills, I'd imagine so, for the different tutorial areas, but I draw and release a lot faster than when I was on the horse. Okay, now finally javelins. Ooh. Okay, so the javelins also, they feel like they've got a lot more weight behind them um, than the previous game, which makes sense. Um, you know, you're literally throwing like a small spear kind of thing, so... Oh, got to compensate for that drop off. Come on. That high? Got that. Eh. Yeah, I don't know, I found that in the other games, the the ranged combat wasn't all that viable. Um, yeah. Oh yes, just got it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, tutorial done. Um, it's got a similar feel, so I feel quite comfortable with it. Um, cool, let's go. Yeah, ready. Let's go. Okay, so here we are on the world map. Um, so when you interact with a, a place like, you know, here's the training grounds, you'll come up with a menu like that. You can go into the place itself and go and walk around, um, so on and so forth. When you get to towns, we'll see it just now. You can choose, I think if you've met the shop owners, you can choose to interact with them directly through the menu um, or go and walk around yourself. So leave uh, brother before we do anything else we are low on food there's a village north of here where we can buy some provisions and find some help you're a better rider than i am so i'll let you lead the way sure sure okay so navigating so you can move around with wasd um panning your view dragging your mouse okay cool and zoom in and out so this is the world map Looking really awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Quite interesting. I like this map. I wonder if there's... I don't know if there's ships or something like that. Or if there's like... Anyway. Um, okay, here we are. So we click on the map to move. And there we go. That's our little party over there. Moving along. And we're going to this village over here. Oh, a bunch of refugees fleeing from something. Kind of like us, I guess. Okay, so this is the, the screen entering settlements. We have arrived at Tavea. Uh, to explore the location, you can enter the settlement by pressing the highlighted button on the left. So, take a walk around. Here, it's kind of showing you all the people of interest. So, the head man over here. Um, I think these are the kind of units you can recruit, maybe. Anyway, let's take a walk around.
Okay, so we're here, I guess. So we need food and after that, maybe some men to come with us. The headman here can probably help us. Let's try to find him. Okay, speak to the headman. You can hold left alt key to see the location of the headman. Once you're near him, press F to speak with him. Uh, left alt. Left alt. Ah, there we go. Whoa! Oh, the graphics are looking so awesome in this game. Oh, so happy. Anyway, uh, where was he? There, good man. Nethor. Okay, hi, headman Nethor. Some doors. What kind of weapons do I have? Uh, sword, spear, shield. Can I sheath? I don't remember how to sheath. Anyway. I am Nethor, headman of this village. What brings you here? We need help. Some raiders have taken our younger brother and sister captive. We think they may have passed this way. They got your people too? Sorry to hear that. Those bastards have done a bit of killing and looting in these parts as well. We think they've gone north. I reckon there are a few folk around here who will join you in going after them if you'll pay for their gear. Okay, fair enough. Once you've made preparations, come and talk to me again. I may have a task for you if you're going after the raiders. So, to leave a mission, you can hold down the tab key. This will return you to the settlement menu where you can purchase supplies and hire recruits. Okay, so recruitment. Your brother has asked you to hire at least four men before you set out to face the raiders. You can hire troops from villages and towns by clicking on the recruit troops button. So, boom, there we go. Notables help you recruit more and better or higher level troops according to your relation with them. So yeah, that's what I was talking about. You know, the better your relations are with certain people, it makes your life easier. So click on some troops to move them into your party. So the thing is also the troops, as they gain experience under you, can also upgrade. But obviously sometimes it's a bit easier to just go straight to the upgrades. So, headman's troops. One, two, three, four. Should we get two more? Why not? Let's make our lives easier. Done. Okay, buying food. You should purchase supplies from the settlement menu on the left. So yeah, also your party obviously needs food to sustain it as you travel around, so you've got to keep an eye on that. Um, buy food. Okay, so this is like the gear menu. Auxiliary armor, horse boots, some horse, light harness, spatha. Ooh, pretty cool. Anyway, buying food. Your brother recommends that you purchase two sacks of grain. You can do this by transferring them to your inventory with the little arrow on the left. So, one, two. Okay, we've finished our preparations. Let's talk to the headman again. He said he may have a task for us. We could use his friendship. Okay, so yeah, shows the important people like I was saying. There we go. So you can talk. Oh, okay, so it's taking us back onto the map. Glad to see you found what you needed. Now, about that mat I mentioned earlier. There's this wandering doctor who comes through here from time to time. Name of Cacteos. Treats people for free. We're fond of him. Well, we last saw him a few days ago. He was carrying some sort of chest, which he was very mysterious about. He was on some sort of quest, he said, though he wouldn't tell us more. So that's another thing that has been added to this game, um, from what I understand. More sort of a an interesting quest line that you can follow whereas the other game it was literally you could do whatever you want in this you can still do whatever you want or you can follow the quest uh, which is quite fun he set off on the road just a few hours before the raiders came through here um, well he's not really a worldly type just the kind of fellow who'd stumble into a trap and let himself be captured uh, we're worried about so you want me to go save him if you can keep an eye out for him the stacteos we'd be very grateful maybe if he's alive and well He'll tell you a little more about his quest. Okay, so we can leave. Hold tap. Okay, so... 
let's leave now okay so here's raiders raiders mountain bandits okay so we've got to see who we can oh, there's a bunch of villages so we've got to attack these guys obviously and try and hopefully get lucky ah oh, first battle let's go okay so battle commands you can tell your men to charge by opening the movement orders with F1 and choosing charge with F3. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of interesting... Oh, here they come. Quite interesting that we've got horsemen right from the beginning. They're, they're kind of giving us a leg up there. While the enemy's all on foot. Oh, lagging a little bit. Oh, these guys, they seem... So have pretty nice armor. Whoa. My mount got injured. I missed. Let's go. Alright, he's throwing something. Ooh, missed. Oh dear, my horse is dead. Oh jeez. Things are not going well. Who killed me? Uh, okay, well. <laughs> so when you go down, you can sort of observe what's going on on the map. That uh, went alright for my men, but not so much for me. So, yeah. There we go, we won. Got some renown and some morale. Okay, so. Rescuing and taking prison prisoners. After a hard-fought battle, you may have the choice to take some prisoners or recruit those that you have freed from your enemy. Both options are done by transferring troops to your party with the little arrow button on the left. So let's capture them. So you can sell them later on um, for some monies. Okay, cool. Done. And here's loot from them. So padding... Um, Arm guards, I don't have any of those, so what's this? Eastern wrapped arm guards. Why not? Old fur armor. Not as good as mine. But we can sell it later, so let's hold on to that. Uh, cool. Okay, let's let's see if we can do this one a little bit better. But our first one was successful. The the battle was Okay, so for a similar size battle in the previous games, it would take quite a bit longer overall the battle. This one seemed to be a lot quicker. So, next one. Let's go. Everyone charge. I'm going to try and stick to my spear. Use the range a little bit. So there are a lot more advanced battle commands, like I was saying, but... Um, not really at the stage these kind of fights you don't need them so much yay I caused some damage <laughs> Ooh. gotcha so there's also different damage types in the game slash pierce blunt that kind of thing which some damage types work better on certain armors um, so yeah Everyone dead? Oh yay, I survived. Oh wow, my health is full. Okay, so it's I guess it's a tutorial mission, so they're kind of being nice and restoring my health. Um, normally it wouldn't restore automatically, it takes time. Uh, so yeah, done. Okay. Uh, Radagos Raider, got that. Done. A knobbed club. I feel like the knobbed club is probably not anywhere near as good as uh, mine. Cheap paddings, not so much. Cavalier's boots. Now, nah. now, good for selling. Okay, the last group. Okay. 
Okay, let's do it. So yeah, I must say that I really enjoy um, the faster paced battles, um, especially when it's a small one like this. Some of those battles in the other games took way too long. Uh, horse got damaged. Need to switch to the spear. Oh, missed. My guys are definitely doing a lot more work than I am. Don't think I hit him there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Hit him in the head. <laughs> oh no, wait, it was the shoulder. Ah oh, well. Yeah. Let's go. Two more prisoners. Let's see, another noble club. Wrappings. What? Oh, okay. Cool. There we go. Dansky. Do I have three? Oh, okay, cool. Okay. You rescued several prisoners that the raiders had been dragging along. They look parched and exhausted. You give them a bit of water and bread, and after a short while, one staggers to his feet and comes over to you. Hmm. Oh, hello. I don't know who you are, but I'm in your debt. These brigands would have marched us to our deaths. My name's Tactails. I'm a doctor by trade. I was on, well, a bit of a quest, but now I'm thinking it's not really made for... Well, I'm not really made for this kind of thing. I was with a caravan, and they came, just came out of the brush. Uh, we were surrounded and outnumbered, so we gave up. I figured they'd keep us alive, if just for the ransom. But then they started flogging us along at top speed without any water and I was just about ready to drop. I could feel the signs of heat stroke creeping up and I told them but they just flogged me more. I hope your group oh well, if your group hadn't come along, maybe I have a way to thank you properly. We're looking for two children captured by the raiders. Can you tell us anything? I'm afraid I haven't seen any children, but after our caravan was attacked the chief of the raiders, the one they call Ra Radagos took and rode off with our more valuable belongings, including uh, a chest that I had. He seemed to be controlling more than one band raiding around the area. If this lot has your kin, then I'd think, well, then I think he'd be the one to know. And since I have nothing of value left to repair your help, I'll tell you this. If you do catch up with and defeat that ruffian, you may be able to recover my chest. It contains a valuable ornament which I was told could be of great value if you knew where to sell it. I was trying to find out more about it, but as I say, I've had all my urge for traveling flogged out of me. <laughs> right now, I don't think I'd venture more than 20 paces from a well as long as I live. <laughs> oh dear. I'll keep that in mind. It doesn't look like much, and I suspect this lot would give it away for a few coins, but I got it from a mercenary who I treated once and swore it was related to Neretza's folly. I don't know what that means, except that Neretza was one of my, or was of course the emperor who died in battle some years back. Maybe you can find out its true value. Thanks for saving me again. I hope our paths will cross once more. The guy looks a little bit stoned. Okay, so, oh, there's the hideout. Um, yeah, let's go. Hello? Where is it? No? Oh, <laughs> there it is. Okay, let's see. Hopefully we've got enough people. Okay, so they hide out. Let's attack. Okay, hideouts and orders. Hideout missions begin with the enemy unaware of your approach. Order your troops to follow you with the F1. Okay. So we need to try and take them by surprise. Surprise! 
So at the top is, from what I can tell, looks like a sort of power bar, gauging how well the battle's going for you or the enemy. Um, obviously on the bottom right is health and stamina, as well as your weapons. Uh, this is a small hideout. This guy doesn't even know we're coming. Oh, uh, I'm sneaking up on him. Sneaking up on him. Doesn't have any friends. Uh, uh, wow, get wrecked. Are there more? There's probably more. Okay, let's go. I'm going to try and do like an interesting tactic. Uh, let's see. Shield wall, maybe? Uh, I don't see anything. Anyway, let's carry on. Yeah, follow me. Cross over here. They see us. Uh, throwing something at us. How rude. Nah. -uh. Get wrecked, son. Oh, another one there. What a fail. Oh, get wrecked. Yeah, we're rolling now. Try my sword. Huh. It's interesting. It's quite stretched out. They hide out along this river. Game is looking really cool, though, I must say. Speed it up a bit. Crossover, I think there's another one over there. Yeah, chilling. Oh wait, here's a guy. Roar! Oh jeez. Long there. Ooh. Got whacked there. Took a sword to the face. Rather unpleasant. Hey, whoa. Oh, okay. Is that it? Oh, yes. Here's, here's the boss man. Okay. Let's do this. Showdown. Oh. So, who's this that comes through my place of business killing my employees? We heard you took our little brother and sister. Where are they? Good heavens. Uh, I'll need a better description than that. My men have harvested dozens of little brats in the region. Quite good hunting grounds. Already sent most of them south to a slave market, I know. Since your hunt for your kin is fruitless, how about you clear off and save your own lives? Either that or I force you to lick up all the blood you've spilled here with your tongues. Rather mean. Or you and I could settle this one on one. Um Hmm. Hmm. Shall I shall I I don't know what to do. Yeah, let me duel him. Get wrecked, boy! Oh, jeez. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I forgot that I was pretty low on health. Oh, dear. Okay, well, let's try that again. Yeah, take two. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm quite at the place yet to deal or duel with that guy. Got some pretty shiny equipment, and uh, still kind of getting used to the the combat. My guy is like, get wrecked, and I forgot to tell my people to follow me. 
Uh, let's see now. Hold fire. Hmm. I'm just trying to like figure out the controls here. Facing form. Let's go form. Shield wall. Yeah. Yeah. Move up shield wall. Wait. Is this guy here? No one there this time. Okay. Yeah? No. See the spear without a shield. Just thrusts. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Get wrecked, boy. Oh, oh, oh. I swear that spear looked like a wind in his face. It said shoulder, but it really looked like face. Where are you guys? I'm coming for you. No one there this time. Nah. I kind of feel like I want to duel that guy again. But I don't know. I feel like I could have done better. Get wrecked, boys. Roar! Ooh, get wrecked. Yeah, that hit him in the head. Headshot. Here we come. Wait, wake up. Ah, oh, he hit me with a stone. Not cool. Flanking maneuvers. Yeah, get dead. There's someone left? Hmm? Did I miss someone? Oh yeah, there's a guy over there. Let's do it. I mean, don't... Your damn stones. Yeah, that's what's up. Okay, cool. <sighs> I, re I really want to duel him again. Not gonna lie. Remains to be seen if it's a good idea. Yeah, boy! What? Take that! Mm, 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 mm. Work! Ha <laughs> ha! Nailed it. I'm boss. Awesome! Well, I recognize defeat when I see it. If I'm going to be your captive, let me introduce myself. I'm Radagos. You haven't cut my throat yet, which was a wise move. I'm sure I can find a way to be worth more to you alive than dead. Hmm, I don't know about that. You better help us get our brother and sister back, or you'll swing from a tree. Straight up. Oh, you'll need my help, alright, if you want to get them back alive, that is. See, my boys have some pretty specific instructions about what to do if there's a rescue attempt, okay? Shall we get on the road? Remember, if I drop dead of exhaustion or down in some river, that's it for your little years. I don't expect a cozy palaquin now, but you best not... What? You best not make it too hard a trip for me. Ah, you are this guy making demands. Okay, let's catch all of your flunkies. Oh, I lost all my other prisoners. Probably because I got my butt handed to me before. Ah, well. And no loot? Oh wait, you come across a chest with an old piece of bronze in it. It's so battered and corroded. That it could be anything from a cup to a crown. 
this must be the chest Tacteus mentioned to you that had something to do with Naretza's folly. A cup or a crown? They look nothing li alike. Nathanios. I was hoping to find more treasure here, but I think business wasn't going too well for Radagos and his gang. I found this strange looking metal piece though. It doesn't look too valuable, but it could be the artifact Tacteus was talking about. Maybe we can sell it to one of the noble clans for a hefty price. Right, then, let's get on the road. I have a better idea. We should have a better chance, or we would have a better chance if we split up now. I'll take Radagos, Radagos and go find the slave market and look for a way to free the children. However, we must be careful not to endanger their lives, and it could be better to just buy them. We need to have our purses full enough for that, or full for that. I'll need to take these men with us. Radagos is a slippery one. I don't want him getting away. Ah, so you're just going to leave me with like nothing? So you want me to raise the money f to ransom the little ones? Indeed, you'll have to find a way to do that. Maybe this bronze thing can help. Tacteus said it would be worth fortune to the right person. If you manage not to get killed... <laughs> wow. Okay, vote of confidence once again. If he's telling the truth... You must be careful. Never reveal that you have it, but try to understand its value and uh, how it can be sold. One more thing. When you're talking to nobles and other people of importance, make sure you present yourself as someone from a distant but distinguished family. Well, okay. The family name. So, hmm. Uh, you can use our family name if you like, or make up a new one. You will have a better chance of obtaining an audience with nobles, and it'll be easier for me to find you by asking around. So let's see, our surname could be, hmm. Arcus, yeah, I don't know, Arceus, there we go. Why not? There we go, happy? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so we get to create a banner now. Uh, let's see what kind of animal we want to on our banner. Ooh, some of these are pretty cool. Or symbols. Mm. Ooh, that's quite cool. I like the dragon. Um, oh, these these are very like. That's quite Roman looking. Hmm. Choices, choices, so is that. Let's go with this. Looks quite cool. Very sort of Caesar ish. Um, yeah, okay. Let's do sigil color. Oh, uh, yeah, this is very regal looking. Size. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like it. Get on the road now. Once I locate the little ones, I'll come find you. So the tutorial's over. You're now free to explore Kalradia. Okay, ladies and gents. Um, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed my first hour in the game with... Uh, all the issues and getting my butt handed to me and all that kind of thing uh, but it was really fun i'm really really enjoying the game i'm so excited for it to be out um, and i'm looking forward to doing more videos for you guys so if you enjoyed it uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever i release a new video thanks very much for watching guys and i'll see you next time take it easy